I'm frequently asked by you and your customers about the direction IBM is taking, about where our products are heading, and how we're going to help customers grow in an orderly manner, including what options they can expect from us to meet their growth requirements. I believe we have many of the answers to these questions in the announcements we're making today. We're introducing substantial new function, new hardware and new software, along with new prices. We're also introducing new options for growth, both at the central site and in networks. There's a lot of good news to talk about. Let me run down the highlights first, then later on, we'll discuss more of the details and their implications. First off, we're continuing to improve the 3000 series, from the Model S to the 3081. We're adding 8 to 10% more processing power to the Model S at no extra cost. And we're providing the S with two new memory options, offering up to 16 megabytes. Next, at the top of the line, we're bringing out a larger version of the 3081, the Model K. It has up to 40% more performance than the original 3081, the Model D. What's more, most customers will be able to upgrade from a Model D to the new Model K in about 14 hours. Also, for both the 3033 and the 3081, we're announcing two high-performance electronic subsystems, one to dynamically manage paging and the other to dynamically manage application data. An electronic buffer will help balance access time and processing power. Now in software, we're enhancing our primary operating system for large systems, MVS-SP. We're introducing new releases of JES 2 and JES 3, making better use of tightly coupled systems and providing for a common subsystem base. We're also enhancing VMSP to support real memory greater than 16 megabytes and to provide better MVS guest performance by means of microcode. We call it Preferred Machine Assist. At the same time, we're extending MVSSP with MVS Extended Architecture. MVSXA will provide 31-bit addressing to support up to two gigabytes of real memory and two gigabytes of virtual. Also, MVSXA offers dynamic channel addressing for the 3081, allowing up to 4,080 devices to be attached to a system while providing alternate path selection. Obviously, not every customer will require these capabilities now, but I wanted all of you to understand this latest option for our large system users. I'm also pleased to tell you we're further improving the overall price performance of the 3033. As I suggested a few moments ago, this is a big announcement package. I've only touched on some of the highlights. We have a lot more information to share with you. But from what I've sketched already, I think the pattern is clear, that we're continuing to put emphasis on coexistence of 3030X machines and 3081s in the same environments, that there's an evolutionary growth in our systems to protect our customers' previous investments, and that we're continuing to provide expanded capabilities up and down the line for our processors, I.O., and software. Clearly, we're introducing more options for the 80s. This is Poughkeepsie, the home of our large system. It's a location with 11,000 employees and more than 3.8 million square feet including two and a quarter million devoted to manufacturing. Poughkeepsie is where IBM people design and build our high-end processors, as well as develop the programming to support them. With me is the man responsible for all this, Dr. Jack Bertram, president of the Data Systems Division. Jack and I have been talking about the new high-end announcements and what they mean to our customers. These announcements, as were the ones last year, continue to be in response to our customers' requirements. That's important, Jack, because I'm sure what I'm hearing is consistent with your discussion with customers. They're telling us that DP growth will continue, and they're looking to us to continue that growth while protecting their investment. That's always been our approach, and I think we've been able to achieve it. To begin with, let me review the approach we've been taking. We view a system as a combination of internal performance along with the resources to support it, real and virtual storage, channels and I.O., all tied together by an operating system. It goes without saying, each part of the system depends on the other. 
What we've been doing over the last several years is steadily improving parts of the system, both hardware, software, and microcode, to make for better performance. These improvements help maximize the performance of the 3033. They properly prepared customers to not only utilize the 3081, but to be ready for future changes. By doing that, we're continuing the evolution, and making it easier for the 303X system to work side by side with the 3081. Well, it's clear to me that you've succeeded, Jack. I'm especially impressed with the new Model K of the 3081, which delivers a lot more power and is field upgradable from the 3081 Model D. On that point, George, let me note that we've developed a technology base and machine architecture that has plenty of room for growth. The circuit design, the modular design, and density of packaging are moving right along. Coupling these advances with the benefits of water cooling made the announcement of the Model K possible. In developing technologies, our objective always is to focus on those that offer the best overall benefits to the customer, including better performance, lower operating costs, greater reliability, and future growth potential. Some of the high-end requirements that you and I learn about from customers, such as real and virtual memory and data paths, how do these new products help our customers here? Improvements must be made in more than just the speed of a processor. To truly support very high performance processors and the applications of the future, we have to extend today's architecture. That's why we're announcing System 370 Extended Architecture. It's a very significant announcement for our customers. It's something that's needed for our very largest system users. It's a natural evolution from 370 architecture giving those at the top room for enormous growth. And remember, this extended architecture is being supported by an extension to MVS, MVSXA for short. Well, MVSXA is a year away. We want our customers, those with the very largest system requirements, to see our direction and solutions. That way, they can begin their planning and installation of the common or positional subsystems that run under MVS370 or MVSXA. But let's go back to the extended architecture and the opportunity for growth that it offers. With XA, there's no longer a practical restriction of the use of real storage. In addition, it relaxes constraints such as virtual storage and channels. Its primary job is to add new function and to exploit high performance processors. For example, XA can support up to 256 channels with no affinity needed between path and processor. This design lets our new operating system treat each I.O. device as if it had its own channel. What's more, it sequentially selects the first available channel path. Jack, that certainly gives all of our large-scale customers a good sense of where we're headed and will enable them to more effectively plan for growth. Not everyone will put XA to work in the near term, but all customers with MVS SP will be able to migrate towards XA in an evolutionary manner. Jack, I want to pick up on something we said earlier, protection of the customer's programming investments. Could we look at how MVS XA helps achieve that? We've given a great deal of thought to that subject. I think customers will find that of all the facilities in MVS XA, the most valuable is one we call bimodal program execution. With it, a 3081 operating under the control of MVS XA will be able to concurrently execute programs in both 370 and XA mode. So the advantage is in the transition to XA, in not having to recompile or rewrite most of your existing applications. We've been talking about the 3081, but I also think it's important to comment on the 3033. It's still the workhorse of the industry. I agree. From my point of view, the 3033 has never been stronger. Our newest announcements demonstrate our commitment to making it even better. We've got more memory and performance for the 3033 Model S. And the upgradability of the 3033S to an N or directly to a U enhances the 3033 as an investment. Let's take a brief look at what one customer thinks of the potential he has with the newest 3033, a Model S. The city of Albuquerque serves a growing metropolitan area of 450,000 residents. 
In a constrained budget environment with inflationary pressures, we have become dependent on data processing to carry out the functions of government. My group is responsible for providing the data processing facilities with the high service levels necessary to satisfy the needs of our citizens. Last May, we replaced the 370-158 with a 3033 Model S. The installation required only two days, and we exceeded all plan objectives, including continual operation of police and other essential services. Online access was interrupted for less than two hours at cutover. Since then, we have had no downtime attributable to the 3033. Our Model S runs in an MVS environment with TSO, CICS, IMS, SNA, APL, and several information center products. Thus far, it has relieved processor bottlenecks and surpassed our performance expectations. We are now experiencing 2.8 to 7 times the throughput of the 158 Model 3. This department maintains a long-term plan based on projected user requirements. The incremental growth of 3033S gives us the most effective means to meet these requirements. We now expect to increase capacity by adding channels and migrating to MVS SP. Future demands can be met by upgrading in place to a Model N followed by a Model U. Beyond that, we have the options of AP and MP configurations. This flexibility will allow the City of Albuquerque to properly match our 3033's capacity with growing end-user demands over an extended period of time. George, let's take a look at the improvements to MVS and VM. JES 3 now takes fuller advantage of tightly coupled processors, while the new TSO-E gives networking function to TSO. And when you stop to think about it, many of our previous enhancements for the 3033, for example, cross-memory services, are just starting to be installed. So I see the 3033 continuing to be the choice for capacity between the 4300 and the 3081. It's also important to remember the 3033 family remains functionally compatible with the 3081. Many standard features on the 3081 are available for the 3033, like I.O. processing offload, 3033 extension feature, and 3033 extended addressing. Let me add that the 3033 and 3081 both run the common or positional subsystems. In short, there's plenty of room for growth and flexibility. The growth in performance and function is the result of microcode, hardware, and software. Moreover, customers have greater flexibility because they can exploit these architectural enhancements when it's economical for them to do so. Jack, we talked about MVS, but what about VM and its new high-performance option? How does that work? Well, what we're doing is offering preferred machine assist. It allows an MVS guest to run near native performance. At the same time, the new function provides for increased guest availability. We've also enhanced VM370 to improve CMS performance. That's done through a microcode assist. And we're also using microcode for better MVS guest performance in the new preferred machine assist. In addition, we're introducing support for real memory greater than 16 megs. And importantly, we're showing our commitment to support the ongoing use of VM in large system installations. Now let's hear from a customer who's moved up to a 3081, but still has three 3033s working right alongside. In the DuPont Corporation, the Information Systems Department is responsible for providing corporate leadership in the management of business data processing and electronic office technology. The Information Systems Department operates large general purpose computers where centralization provides both technical and cost benefits to the corporation. Two of these centers are located in the Wilmington area and have been expanding at a rate of about 40 to 50 percent a year in both CPU and disk storage capacity. Managing this rate of change requires that DuPont maintain a position very close to the leading edge of technology. Last April, we installed an IBM 3081 alongside three 3033s in a complex MVS JS3 environment. Our principal motivations for installing the 3081 were, one, to secure increased capacity, two, to benefit from the 3081's low space, power, and cooling requirements, and three, to continue our trend of reduced cost per unit of computation. 
the initial hardware installation required only 24 hours. Within three days, the system was integrated into our total configuration, and over the next four weeks, we staged additional workload on the CPU until it was an integral part of the data center. In the process of checking out the machine, we have run almost every system in the shop on it. We have used the 3081 as our global JES3 machine. We have run our remote job entry network, time sharing network, batch systems, information management system, and several teleprocessing networks on the 3081. In this center, any job must be able to be run on any system and reach any disk. We are pleased with the ease of installation, the performance, and the way the 3081 and the 3033s work together. Despite the newness of the processor, announced just five months prior to our installation, we achieved a very reliable performance level with no maintenance problems requiring on-site plant personnel. That says it all. Jack, you and your people have provided a full menu of options for growth with minimal disruption, growth with improved price performance, and new function. This latest announcement is another step in a continuing evolution one that is based on responding to changing and advancing customer requirements. The evolutionary process influences everything we're involved in, technology, programming, and computer architecture. But I can assure you, George, that of equal importance to us is the protection of our customers' investment in both software and hardware. Thank you, Jack. Once again, you and your people are building what our customers need.